I can't even describe to you guys what I'm seeing right now. I, I don't know how I came across this post. It's just this man who is selling watermelons and selling his fruit. And he is, <laughs> he is very excited and very passionate about his fruit. <laughs> Anyways. देखिए भाई की कटिंग करने की स्टाइल में आपको दिखा दू वेलकम बैक टू दैनल हाउ आर यू डूंग टूडे होप दैट यू डूंग गुड थैंक यू ऑलवेज बी हियर आई गैट अ चेंज द Change the page because I'm just watching this thing on repeat. I gotta change this. I gotta change it. Um, what are we doing today? We're listening to some more Jimi Hendrix. We're continuing with the album <laughs> Electric Ladyland <laughs> with House Burning Down, <laughs> released in 1968. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to download the video and put it on. Put it on here because it is is really funny. Um, anyways, yeah. So I don't even know what to say. I'm I'm laughing right now. Let's just go ahead and let the music speak for itself. House burning down, Electric Ladyland. Uh, almost done with the album. Just a couple more songs after this one, and then we'll be moving on to you never know where. Somewhere we'll be going. Let's go ahead and get it into this house or out of this house. House burning down, Jimi Hendrix. Let's go. Talk about burning the house down. I can't run off to see just why and who could it be this time Someone call MIB cuz that sounded like a UFO crashing down at the end with all the phasing the the flanger I don't even know if that's really what it is I have no idea I'm not a guitarist but <laughs> but that ending You're getting some studio magic in there. You're getting that very expression, kind of abstract tail end guitar that Hendrix is known to do every once in a while. This track is really a hot piece of fire. This is this is hot. The guitar is hot. I love how we switch in the beginning from this like maelstrom, this oven, this inferno, this maelstrom. I don't know. It's a it's a fiery storm into. This funk-led marching band beat. What a cool little idea, and what an interesting groove to kind of fit yourself into. Because a marching beat is very rigid. It's very stringent. It's just like dun 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 dun. Like it just stays in place. It doesn't really change. Not much. Not much. But especially in the intro of that funk beat, listen to how Jimmy plays the bass there. And by the way, I think Jimmy's a pretty underrated bass player. I don't know how he's ranked, like, you know, compared to other bass players. But what I've heard here is is pretty nice. Um, but getting back to the beginning of that marching band section, the transition is led by a very tasty bass uh, little lick there. Got a drum fill, and then it just sweeps and just perfectly glides down, takes down the landing into that marching band beat. But because of the funk that's established before, it doesn't feel rigid. It doesn't feel like it's stuck in a very strict form. It actually flows. Very nicely, it grooves very nicely. Um, of course, the guitar. I, I don't even know what I can say about the guitar playing here from Jimmy that hasn't been said before. But I do think the drumming from Mitch stands out a lot in this particular track because I think it's because of the way that he plays, especially with the breaks and the fills that he uses. I think that's what adds to this kind of formless rhythm and this formless expression that allows the rest of the music, of course, to carry forward. But yeah, I'm actually curious, like. How was Hendrix looked at as a bass player? Like, did he did he enjoy playing bass, or did he kind of feel like, okay, I need to play bass on this track. I need to someone needs to handle it. Might as well be me. Like, I don't know. I'm just curious about that specific aspect because I do think it's interesting that he steps in on bass in uh, a decent amount of the tracks here on this side of the album, especially. But yeah, like I said, Mitch Mitchell really is, I think, the driving force in this particular track. And just moving it all along at this very very fiery place, and then I think the marching beat and the way that it's played is played a little bit of space, not a ton, but a little bit of space, allowing Jimmy to actually sing and narrate and tell us of this story. And I do like how it, it leaves this kind of open for us because 
there's a lot of lyrics here. He's actually telling a story, which I'm not 100% sure what's going on, but something's, something's happening. Someone's house is burning down. <laughs> but the music gives just enough, just enough room to allow uh, Jimmy to sing on top of everything else that's going on. Because this is a busy track. And that's what I mean. Like, it feels fiery. It feels like the flames are just constantly lapping up and licking our toes, about to envelop us in its fiery gorge. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But... I think you understand what I'm talking about at the same time. Hey, 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 look at this guy turn a hellfire red. Somebody's her house is, somebody's house. Somebody's house is burning down, down. I sound like Medea, somebody's house. <laughs> well, I asked my friend, where is that black smoke coming from? He just coughed and changed the subject and said, oh, I think it might snow some. So I left him sipping his tea and I jumped in my chariot and rode off to see just why and who could it be this time? Sisters and brothers, daddies, mothers, standing around crying. When I reached the scene, the flames were making their ghostly whine. So I stood on my horse's back and screamed without a crack. I say, oh, baby, why'd you burn your brother's house down? So in a literal sense, he arrives at the scene. Someone has burned, I guess, their brother's house down. Um, but the person he just left didn't seem too concerned about it, even as they were coughing. So they're inhaling the smoke. They're, they know it's there. The evidence is there that something's happening, but they're ignoring it. They're saying, oh, I think it might snow some. Like they're com not even just ignoring it. They're completely uh, and purposely remaining oblivious to it, at least. Whereas Jimmy actually takes the step and goes to find out what's going on. Well, someone stepped from the crowd. He was 19 miles high. His shots were tired and disgusted, so he painted red through the sky. I said, the truth is straight ahead, so don't burn yourself. Instead, try to learn instead of burn. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like just that, I mean, we're getting a great little theme here, but I like that little line, that little nugget of truth. So I rode, or I finally rode away, but I'll never forget that day. Because when I reached the valley, I looked way down across the way. A giant boat from space landed with an eerie grace and came and taken all the dead away. Well, I, I, honestly, you're getting an M. Night Shyamalan ending there. <laughs> I'm following the story. I'm following the themes. I like what's being written here. I like what's being spoken about. And then he, the giant boat in space landed and took all the de dead away. Okay. It's it's Alien Sharon. It's Alien Sharon. <laughs> but I, I like the message that he's trying to get across. Instead of burning things down, things that maybe you don't understand or things that you don't like, maybe try to, to learn from it. Once again, I've mentioned before, but through education, so much hatred, disdain, and dislike, and just contrast between people can be immediately assuaged, for lack of a better word. Just immediately done away with. So I think that's basically what he's saying. And instead of ignoring things like his friend did, take heed. Take, <laughs> take heed. Charge the... Take heed to your steed. Um, like, actually put some action into it. See if you can find out what's going on. You know? I like that. I like that. Good song. Good song. Hey. Let me know what you guys thought. I don't know what the hand thing was. Let me know what you guys thought of the track. You can let me know in the comments below. Hope that you enjoyed it. You can follow me in a bunch of places as well. But, of course, you're more than invited to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, my God. That's the Florida man in me. Um, have a wonderful one. I'll see you later. Bye.